Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, ES is basically range bound. Now we had some data that came out today and I just wanna show you how this played out. I think this is really pertinent. So one of the things that we always do in the pre and the post, we always look at that first bar where the economic data comes out and this was the ADP, uh, basically the, the equivalent of a non-farm payrolls. But the, the way that you wanna look at it is it's basically with ADP's data. Now ADP's data is a little bit different. We're gonna get into that, but more importantly, we're gonna get into what stocks are moving after hours and what looks like it's going to continue to move after hours, specifically the banking names we should need to talk about because a, a lot happened in that space today. But I think it's important to just note what's going on in the world of high finance and ADP out, that's your range. And then just look at how we played that range all day today. It's one of the reasons why I tell people you really need to mark these levels because it tells you where the players are based upon the data and what they think of the data. And you can see how that became support for a period of time. Then it was resistance until it flipped. And then that pretty much was the high all day. You had a period, obviously, from 11 to 1 uh, where you played around with it. And then you just had this massive massive drop basically out of nowhere right around that 130 level i mean it's almost you could put set your watch to 130 so definitely something for us to take a look at but what do i feel about that i feel that you're overbought here we've been talking about this for some time i do think that you're in a bull market i mean that's pretty obvious but i do think you're overbought so when you see stuff like this i mean i i don't want i don't wait i just get out of the way specifically for day trades i'm referring to i i do not wait now do i let that affect my swing trades or do i let that affect my long-term positions not really but if you're day trading on the day and you're up and you just see something like this i don't even care if you if you lose the the gain you, you need to get out of the way because you don't know what's coming next if you can do this in one minute what can you do in five right you just you really don't know so in my experience you're just better off getting out of the way setting up and then just coming in the next day and fighting again and we're going to talk about that a little bit today about what's going on out there but most important let's take a look at the nq real quick and i just want to show you this this level again so this is that 815 level and i do use these and i do trade trade with them and if you're trading futures or you're trading zero dated options and you're not marking these off you're at a disadvantage period no doubt about it i mean you can see how it respected here how it broke when it gave reversal and then wrote it down until what support becomes what resistance get it good so when we can take a look at this and then just rty i'm not going to mark it off again and just bore everybody but let's just take a look at rty because i think this is pertinent you know rty closed higher and I think that's important. Let's take a look at the ES. Did the ES close higher? It did, but you closed in this bar. Did the RTY close in that bar? Not really. You kind of popped out of it. You're still in it, but it's really not the same setup, is it? I think that's an important distinction. Take a look at what's going on here with the NASDAQ. It's a pretty ugly bar, guys, because not only did you not be able to get over that high, but again, you're 50% of that bar down. So when you look at this, you would have to say that, you know, that bar seems to be in control right now. And we just put the most simplest moving averages in. You have the 12, the 22, and the 55. That's what I use. You should use what you're comfortable with. But then again, let's just take a moment and look at this data. So we have the ADP data. Let's start there. 30 employees or less. That is the average company that they're dealing with. 30 employees or less. And then you basically are at that 140. We're looking for 150. The previous was 111. I mean, it's basically a non-event and the stocks acted as if it was a non-event. You saw that movement. And then we saw Jolt's Jobs and you have that 886, 889 was previous. And then we were looking for 89. So it was a non-event there. And how about Powell? What did he say? Well, I think that this says it pretty well. I mean, what he's looking for is he's not really looking to do anything. It really seems like he's in no rush. I mean, this is was really where he's going with it to start reducing Fed funds at some point this year, but only when there's greater confidence that his inflation sustainably moved towards that 2% target. Now, you have non-farm payrolls, which is the BLS data, and they use the ADP data that I just showed you to determine where they stand. So let's go back to that. This ADP data they use to determine now what BLS is going to be on Friday. The problem with that is it's not really that highly correlated because you're looking at smaller companies. So we need to be aware of that. It is possible with GDP where it is and what we're seeing in the unemployment data that we do see pretty much at just an absolutely higher number. Now, I'm not the only one that's thinking that. It was a statement out of a couple investment banks today, more mid-tier types of investment banks that deal specifically with the bond market more than equities. And they're thinking that the number could be a little bit higher as well. We're going to have to see what happens. You never know, but that could be a kind of a negative surprise for the market if it is. Just being the kicking the can down the line, we've gone from seven cuts, uh, who knows where we are now, two cuts, three cuts. Who, you know, we're, we're somewhere, somewhere along the lines, this bond market flipped from, uh, by the way, uh, we're not going to cut rates anymore, which was or raise rates anymore, which was right here. And somehow we went to seven rate cuts 
to now we're at zero. So the truth always, as, as always, is somewhere in the middle. And I think that's a really important distinction. How about Bitcoin? What's going on there? Well, Bitcoin continues to grind higher. I think that there's some things going on here we should probably talk about before we get into some of the, what I refer to as the real names. But if you take a look at Bitcoin, you're actually closing higher than you did previously. And so that might be one of the reasons why some of these names are closing the way that they are. But then again, we'll point at something like this and say, look at micro strategies. And again, all, you know, it's just a very simple 20% move, nothing. Um, look, here's the way that this works. And just so you get it, when you have, and you might want to remember this for this move or any move, when you have extreme volatility, you're setting up for a change in trend. When you have extreme volatility, you're setting up for a change in trend. That does not mean it has to happen tomorrow, but it's setting up for it. It is not possible for this to move up 20, down 20, up 20, down 20%. It's just not going to happen. Specifically, if you go back and you take a look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's doing the same exact thing that it did last time. You have these 10% down moves, and then you just kind of go sideways like you, you, know, you do that. It's kind of what it does. You just kind of pull back and then you kind of go sideways. Now, the question really is going to be, are the retail investors going to get more involved? It's possible, but you know, for me, MicroStrategies makes the most sense because now you're literally paying more for Bitcoin than Bitcoin, which makes zero sense. And there isn't, an, don't get me wrong, there is an underlying business. And that's one of the reasons why I always like buying micro strategies. But micro strategies on you know, February 23rd uh, was 675. And then you go and take a look at it here on Bitcoin and you go, okay, well, where, where were we here? And you're roughly at 52. So we have Bitcoin that's up 20% and we have micro strategies in the same period of time that is now up about 100%. It's kind of silly at this point. And this is coming from somebody that really likes owning micro strategies, specifically when it's trading at a discount with its Bitcoin, not at a premium. There is zero reason to own something that's trading at a premium. Why? Because he's going to go buy more Bitcoin. I mean, you, you could go and buy more Bitcoin, Bitcoin too. So it's not like he's got the market on, on it. So just something to think about. Um, I, I really don't get it. I think there's actually a firm out there right now that's basically saying just short micro strategies and go long Bitcoin. It actually, it actually does make sense if you think about it, but unless his business is just going to start booming. But anyway, I, I think it's ahead of itself. Now, the halvening is coming, and we all know that the halvening for lack of a better term, I just like saying it sounds like a horror movie. What, what we're waiting for with the halvening is we're just going to see how this whole thing plays out. But what is really important about, quote, the halvening? It just means that costs are going to increase. So let's say that costs double. Let's just say that they don't even double. Let's just say that they're up a third. How much, are, hence it's called the halvening for a reason, how much are you going to see people go out there and try to find these things anymore and find more Bitcoin, right? They're not going to do double the work for the same amount of money. It's not going to work, work that way. If you had a boss and your boss goes to you, oh, I know you're working 40 hours a week, but you know what? For that 100 grand that you're getting every year, yeah, now you got to work 80. You're going to be like, oh, cool, cool. You're going to go get another job, right? You're going to go find something else. And that's what's going to happen. Hence, the way that people think that this is going to speed up, I, I think it's going to do the exact opposite. I think miners have a lot of problems. That's my personal opinion of it. Um, and I think I don't think I'm alone because you can literally see that if you go from the 28th from when earnings were out down, you're down about 50% in Mara. Uh, it's pretty clear what's going on here, and I don't see how this is going to hold, quite frankly. And I think that Mara, Riot, uh, CLSK, I don't care You know if you're using what CLSK is using. I know they're the clean energy guys that are doing the mining. I don't care if they're using otters, and then they're building dams with beavers. Like It, it really doesn't matter. You're not going to make more money, right? So the question then becomes, which one's valued correctly? I don't have an answer for you. I can just tell you, technically looking at charts, that Mara is trying, keyword, trying to hold on to that 55. I use a 12, a 22, a 55. You should use what you're comfortable with. I appreciate your comments about doing the PLs and showing live trades. I've been doing the PL for a while, and I think that we're getting, uh, people are getting those ideas. So I will continue that. I'm not going to do it every day, obviously, it'd be exhausting, but I do think it's helpful. So if we take a look at this and we can see how everything is playing out for us, this is really important for people to get. You're sitting right on that 55. Are you going to break or are you not going to break? You look at Riot. Riot already made a decision and it broke. I think Mara's next, and I think there's more meat on the bone there. CLSK, I did short today. It was a pretty easy short. Uh, I thought you were going to kind of follow through, and you didn't. You're sitting in there. So maybe that's not the one. So I am currently short that. And just disclosure, I am also short MSTR. And so we'll kind of go from there. Now, one thing that stood out like a uh, sore thumb today in today's video, I really just want to hammer home 
what I'm seeing out there, and we're going to talk about NYCB and what's going on there and why it's actually really good uh, for REITs, like really, really good. But it's good for REITs, and it's also good for the regionals. If you have banking stability, it's good for the REITs. I'll have to spoil alert. There it is. The one thing that we need to note here is that we are seeing tech being sold any chance they get. So they come out with earnings, and they just dump, right? It's not just that time that they're doing it. Here's TTD. Here's Net. Here's Dell. All right, they're doing it over and over again. Wash, rinse, repeat. And one of the comments I had in the Alpha Chasers community was just telling people the way that we're really outperforming right now is we're setting up after earnings for the earnings calls. So we're, we're prepped and we're ready for when it comes out so that we don't even have to trade. We're not really trading so much or we're trading out in the morning when retail is buying and it's working very, very well. It suggests that if you know how to trade after hours, and you know how to trade earnings, you do it because that's really where the, you know, the money's being made candidly. But all you're seeing is you're seeing very, you're seeing zero follow through. There's only a couple names out there that really had that kind of follow through after earnings. Uh, and you see that with NVIDIA. And I just want to show you what I mean. And, and this does become concerning to me. Now, I usually get concerned before, before it usually happens. But when you have, when you have trades like this and you're in a trade and the stock comes out and they get a better rating, which is really good for the company candidly, because everybody can adjust their earnings on the company now, meaning you're going to rate, they're going to raise guidance or you're going to raise the earnings because if you can borrow money cheaper, that means your debt service is lower. If your debt service is lower, that means that you have more money, hence more earnings. Think of if you had a credit card and you were paying 10%, now you're paying 5%, your payment drops, no different. It starts breaking out on this news, right? You could just see it bonking along this line, see how tight it's getting and then boom, it breaks out on the news and it just starts ripping, right? Once it starts ripping, that was really it. Rallies, tries to hold and then you just selling all day, comes back down to that open and then they just rally in the close, you're playing around after hours. This was still a nice close, but what you, you really have to watch, for me, what I have to watch, I should say, is when I see this kind of nonsense, my antenna starts going up big time. So when you're here, right, this is a five minute bar, highlights it perfectly, and all of a sudden from here, you're up four or five bucks, and then here you're down four or five dollars, no reason, all they're doing is just looking to see who they can take money from, these are little changes in trends and behavior that are not common. It is not common to see that kind of pattern. If you went through here and you went through that on a five minute chart for a month, you're not gonna see a lot of those. I'm not saying you're not gonna see reversal bars like you're gonna see here, but those kinds of reversal bars during trading where both are doing that exactly on that kind of range, you're not gonna see it that often. You're gonna see one here, one there, this, but you're not gonna see it to that magnitude. And that's definitely something that you have to pay attention to, right? It's not just the movement, it's the magnitude of the movement that should concern you. It certainly concerned me. And you did see how that responded eventually down, up one, two, down, and then they just eventually, you know, cratered. So this is definitely something that you're going to want to watch or certainly something that I'm going to want to watch tomorrow. Uh, SMCI, I would say this about it. And I do think it's important to just go through this. You're constantly gap filling on these names, constantly down, gap fills, down gap fills, right? So this was pretty clear. I actually had a uh, position in this. So this is pretty interesting. I thought it would, I'd highlight this because it shows you exactly what we're doing um, or what I'm doing in the room. So this is the observation room where we trade in the community. But we saw the volume spike and we got involved at 114 at NVIDIA and we'll show you how fast this happened. The, the rating change is huge for EPS, lower data, bottom line, blah, 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 continues higher. That's 122, 136, closed all day trades. And now I'm short. And I said it might be quick. And the reason for that is because we just saw this massive drop in the market. And we really don't have a correlation to it. You people could say, oh, well, it was because the, the beige book link, linked or they knew Kashari was going to speak or someone didn't like the 17 week T-bill auction. You could say anything you want. It was a vicious move down. Vicious. And so when you see that, and I don't have to, I, could, I stayed short the NASDAQ for two hours and didn't have a care in the world. It never moved from where I shorted it. So there are telltale signs like that that you just want to watch. It is very difficult to predict when you're going to consolidate and go sideways. Most people don't even bother to do that. Um, but anyway, so you can see like NVIDIA here down two minutes. But here I'm just stating what I'm doing and then people can either follow along or not. But here we are and it just says I'm not moving them. Now, what I'm doing here, and I'm just gonna show this, I'm just gonna do it this way because it's cleaner. I won't get into the NYCB trade. I'm gonna actually talk about it a little bit and what we're doing there. Uh, but, 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 where is what I'm looking for? All right, so right here, you can see at 327, we're up and I went live because I wanted people to understand this NYCB. Uh, but puts trimmed up five bucks, leaning towards Microsoft puts. I didn't do that. Uh, that we pay, I paid 27, the 44, $15, I'm out. And where did I get out? I got out at the same level and I got out right here. I got out right there, 
right, right into that. And you could see the timestamp showing that. And the reason for that is because I don't want to hold them overnight. You know, you don't know what you're getting overnight right now. And quite frankly, I didn't want to deal with that. So I think that this is an important distinction. And now we have to see how this plays out tomorrow. People will say, oh, it's fine. I would just be careful up here. Now, I don't know. I don't know how this plays out yet. I really don't. I think it's really... I don't, you, you know, frankly, I don't know, ever know how anything's going to play out. You know, none of us really do. But you're never going to test that 1042 level. You know, they, we're just getting used to these moves like they're no big deal. And I think that, it, I'm not saying that it's over, but some consolidation here is not the worst idea in the world. So we're going to have to see how this plays out. But that's what I would expect. I would expect some consolidation, but we're not seeing that yet. Now, the big news of the, of the day that really saved the day, in my opinion, and saved a major problem, and this saved a much larger problem than people think it did, was that you actually had a fund come in today and start supporting NYCB, and you could see this massive move in KRE because KRE was blowing up. The regional banks were blowing up in the afternoon, and then it became clear what was going on. So NYCB, I was actually short today, uh, and was just getting in getting out as quick as I possibly could. But what was happening with it uh, is that they were raising capital. No one knew how that was going to go. And then lo and behold, the you know the ex-Secretary uh, of Treasury stepped in with his, uh, his hedge fund and they stepped in and they became the lead in it. I um, mean, they bought stock and they have the, the, they have the converts at $2. So it's probably safe is the way people are going to view it now. And that's how I would view it as well, that it's probably safe. And I think that it makes sense that people are going to view it that way, that they've saved, quote, the bank and they've saved the equity. And that means that you're probably not going to see runs on these banks and it probably saved them from having a run on this bank, quite frankly. So I would watch this very, very carefully tomorrow. But anybody that's short this right now and was looking for that zero, they have to cover. You have to realize that the chances of that going to zero now are probably pretty slim. And what they probably do is fix the bank, lower the balance sheet, and, and work their way out of it. And eventually they find some kind of suitor but I, I think that that's what happens here. Or they just straighten the bank out and then these new funds become partners of New York Community Bank. Uh, could be something as simplistic as that, but I think that that's where this is heading and that's kind of where my, where my head would be with it. But it did lead to some decent moves in DPST. You were all over the place today. I mean, you were down from 69, you went all the way up to 80 and you look like you're setting up to break out. If we put the simplest of averages in, you can just kind of see where you're at. But I like this a lot because it really sets you up. You know, this long-legged doji is going to make some decisions, and then we can kind of go from there. Again, you, know, you had some others that came out with earnings. I think tomorrow, out of all the days, is going to be the quietest. For me, I think it's going to be the quietest. But you never know. Um, it's really going to be dependent on Bitcoin tomorrow, and you have some economic data coming out, but you don't really have a lot. Like, you don't have things that I'm, you know, really that passionate about and they're going to have Powell speak again but he usually gets the majority out of his nonsense the first day and you have the bond auctions as well you know Friday is going to be the big day but VSCO came out after hours and lowered guidance uh, and their earnings are going to be a little lower than expected and that's why you're acting the way that you are so the things really to watch tomorrow in my estimation are not going to be hey, what are the markets doing because if you take a look at XLK uh, you can see you're barely hanging on here after breaking out. I would start looking at the leading names, the top seven, and what are they doing? And that's where my focus was today, even on shorting them, where you gapped up and you sold down all day. Crowd, you gapped up, you sold down all day, as I explained earlier. You start going through these, they don't look, as I refer to it, they certainly don't look groovy, do they? I mean, they really have just absolutely blown up here, haven't they? And this is something that we've been talking about for some time. You're slicing through these 55s like a hot knife through butter. Look, I finally got one of my metaphors right, or analogies rather, right? So if you see something like this, it shouldn't really make you feel warm and fuzzy. And then you go, okay, well, Amazon's hanging in there. It is, but you just go through the big guys and take a look. Meta can't break through that 500, it keeps rustling. Everybody was pouring into Netflix and then they just got completely metumboed up there. So these are the things that we have that are going on right now. And then you go, okay, well, what is working? Well, VKTX looked like it was gonna break out. And then we just got back into Wick City, right? We keep hitting that 95, 96. You think it's gonna go and then we're just getting metumboed. And you're seeing this over and over again, even today when we start looking at cost. Now this is up after hours and it looks great. But if you look internally at how this traded, or even looking at raw stores today and how that traded, you know, that never even should have been down, A and F, right? This really should not have come down the way that it did on those quarters. So are we starting to get a little tired? I, it's starting to feel a little bit long in the tooth. Again, it's really very difficult to predict when something like this is going to roll. But if I had to tell you when I think it's going to roll, I think it's going to roll when we see something like Bitcoin crack, because to me, it's that speculative fervor that's driving the market right now. That is it.